the monster you've been wanting. But they will see me when I'm coming. I'll be laughing while you're running. Oh, you won't see me when I'm coming. Hello, everyone. I will be reviewing Power Book 2, Season 1, Episode 2, Exceeding Expectations. Can you tell me what did you think about Power Book this episode? Because I'm going to tell you how I really, really feel about it. And I am not pleased at all. I want my power back. I feel like they killed power for a teeny bop power. That's what I get. I feel like this show is more dedicated towards um, young adults or teenagers. And I feel like power was more for grown adults of age. <laughs> and when I saw this episode, I was basically like bored out of my mind, actually. My five-year-old self wanted to take a crayon and write all over the goddamn wall. <laughs> That's how bored I was with this episode. Yo! We gonna get into all this. And let me tell you, they is putting my girl Tasha St. Patrick through the ringer with the bogus charges of her being the queen pin of St. Patrick and Tommy criminal organization. What can you say? What? We all know she is not the queen pin. But her lawyer, David McLean, has to prove this in the court. So he actually goes see her to get down to the bottom of these bogus charges. And he brings a female investigator with him. So the lady asks her questions. Did she have any knowledge that her husband was a king pen? And Tasha says no. The woman do not believe her because Tasha name is all over the paperwork. And she admits to opening two accounts for them. And McLean asks her questions like she is on the jury. He asks her, are you the head of St. Patrick? Egan's criminal organization, she says no. He asks her, have you ever ordered hits? She says no. The third question she messed up on because she asked for clarification. And he asks her, have you ever sold drugs or was part of any hits of this criminal organization? And the female investigator was like, why do you need clarification? But she answers no anyway. Tyreek is actually in Zeke's room counting the money. And he noticed he's short. Zeke comes in wanting his book report that Tyreek did. And... Tyreek want to know, can he come to his aunt house for dinner? And Tyreek tells Zeke to read the paper. I was like, Tyreek ain't no gangster. Because I never heard of a gangster writing somebody else's paper. They get their papers written, but they don't write papers. And I like... He's going to have to mature a little bit because you're supposed to tutor him, not do his work for him. Uh, that would be out of the question for me because I won't be doing nobody's paper. I can barely do my own paper. How the hell am I be writing somebody else's paper? And this is why Tyreek can't finish his class assignments because he's doing everybody else's work. Like, what the hell? Zeke tell him he got him. So he gonna ask 
and he gonna read the paper and everything, you heard? Tyreek's into the classroom late. And he sits next to the girl that he met on campus. And you have homegirl in the class, Brashonda, going in on her classmate. The white girl, Ashley, and the black boy, Richard. Yeah, I like, she was not having none of that. She was putting them all in their place. She's like, I got two names, okay? Stay in your lane, because nobody asked you anything. So, the teacher did not take it easy on Tyreek, and he asked him about the book, and Tyreek actually explains, but his homegirl next to him actually want him to elaborate more and what he think about the end and it comes out that Tyreek did not finish the book. Professor Reynolds was going in on Tyreek. He was like, if you can't handle this course, maybe you should take an easy course. And here come Bruchana being messy. My girl was messy. She was like, <laughs> my girl was like, he got Messy, I cannot love. But I love people who stand up for themselves, no matter what a race or what um, financial class you are in. Let me tell you, you will get read the same. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Does not matter. And I like that about Bushanda. And his homegirl actually apologized because she didn't mean to blow up his spot. Tyreek get a text. So he meets up with the lawyer in the church and the lawyer want to know what is the real deal. Why are the feds coming after his mother? Tyreek tells the lawyer that his mother is innocent and Sachs knows this. And it's a personal vendetta with the feds. McLean wants Tyreek to talk bad about his father at the funeral, making him to be a vicious monster to make his mother looked good in the light. So when she faced the jury, they would know what kind of person she was up against. That's why she had him killed. Okay, Tyreek is on campus and his roommate Gianni actually meet up with him. He was like, I've been texting and calling and you've been knowing my calls, right? And he want to know, is he going to his father's funeral? And he invites them to a party, knowing that he don't like his brother. And he asks him about some about selling dope. I said to me, I don't like the roommate. Something is up with that roommate. I like, I believe the roommate is a mold for somebody to get information against Tyreek to go back and tell it to someone. I don't know who it is, but that's the feeling I get. And I believe Tyreek should watch his back for his roommate. Cause he just coming out of nowhere. And it's not a coincidence that he is in the same room with Tyree. He's blowing up his phone. And then now he want to know about the dope. Chad, I smell a mold to me if you ask me. I don't know about you, but I smell a mold, child. Tyreek declined because he get a text from Zeke and Zeke tell him that he's invited to the dinner at his um, auntie's house. So you have Monet and her side dude who's a cop. And he is all in his feelings talking about he want to be with her and what he could do and all this. And Monet shuts that down. She was like, you can't protect me like Lorenzo could protect me out in these streets. Lorenzo name ring bells in these streets where anything he say goes over the side dude cop. To me, it like Monet is playing. She just want, you know, the eggplant and the side dude is catching feelings to me. That would it like to me. I don't know about you. I ain't mad at you. Get it how you can get it, girl. I know this right. Monet tells him that he got to go because the kids cannot 
see him there. Okay? You have Tyreek meeting up with Jane St. Patrick, um, old business partner Stern. But she gives him words and advice about how to proceed as speaking at his father's funeral. It will affect him and his family financially. And how would he provide if he speak a certain way at his father's funeral? And I actually agree with Stern. And I thought it was good advice that he gave Tyreek. Zeke is actually in the office with Professor Milgram. And he trying to get to know her. And all she is concerned is about Tyreek and what's going on with Tyreek. And she paying Zeke actually no mind, basically. And she want to get more information about Tyreek. He like, we don't talk like that, you so, what I get from Professor Milgram, I think she a little bit crazy. I ain't gonna lie. She a little cuckoo, cuckoo crazy. That's what I do. Mm. So, at this point, you have the prosecutor versus the defense. The defense, McLean thinks that, um... Tasha is innocent, and the investigator tells him he should walk away from the case because her and her son are both liars, which is to be true, but she's still innocent. The prosecutor wants Sachs to stick it to Tasha. And how is McLean planning to prove she is not the queen pick? And they planning to use the ammunition of her saying that she told Tommy to order the hit on Jane St. Patrick. So the question is, how are they going to prove that Tasha is not the queen pin? Will Tommy Egan come out of the shadows and testify in court? I doubt it. Because I don't know no gangster that's going to come to court has done criminal activity willing to testify they killed somebody on somebody else's behalf. So I bet Tommy Egan is not going to even be on this show. Tyreek visits his mom at the prison. They have a conversation and Tyreek don't know how he's going to speak at his father's funeral and tell him that his father was a complicated man and she do not want him moving dope and to focus on his classes. Tax is begging and pleading for people to take the case. He actually begs Gaza to take the case. And Gaza don't really want to do it, but he's going to do it anyway because they have to do it. David McLean and they have bumped heads on cases before and or messed up a case against Gaza or something like that. Tariq meets up with Professor Milgram and she want to know about his feelings and how he feel about the, the death of his father and she want him to explode all his feelings and all this crap and he don't want to talk about it but he leave because he got a text from Z. To me, something is a little off from uh, Professor uh, Milgram. Professor um, Milgram go see Professor Reynolds and she tell him that Tyreek is not expressing himself and she like how he is supposed to express himself he's a black man in America uh hello and he tells her to stop trying to put her fix her up on people who don't want to express themselves and then her bullcrap project and stuff like that. And then it comes out that that Mr. Professor McReynolds might be a murderer and wrote a book about it? I don't know. We have a murderer teaching the children? I guess our kids. I don't know. So they express themselves and then they begin to smash. Oh, no. I don't know who all of it is, but... 
He didn't care too much about Oliver. <laughs> I don't know who the hell Oliver is. Ooh! Carrie T comes out. My girl is a sex addict. And the sponsor said, leave him alone. How you did not expect this? You the one got him the job. She said, don't be alone with him. Don't never close the door. Drop that as a dead habit. My girl. Tyreek is at the Zahala's family. And they have a dinner. And he thanks them. Their uncle Frank drive by. He like, what, I can't see my family? And Monet wanna know why is he there? So she gave them all orders what to do. Everybody does it immediately. No problem, no questions asked, done. So, Kane takes um, Tariq back to the school. Uncle Freak gave me pedophile vibes and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Asking his niece, oh, how she filled out. I was like, oh my god, that's 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 disgusting. <laughs> Very disgusting. I feel like the mom was trying to pimp out her daughter on how to about how to get information from people. I was like, that's a no no. Oh no, don't pimp out your daughter so you can get information, child. That's a dangerous game, child. And on the way. Tyreek made calm under the pressure of Kane. Kane seemed like he, he's slow. I don't know. I get slow vibes from Kane. He can't think on his own. And Tyreek spilled some knowledge on him that his uncle was a rat and stuff like that. Boom, boom. Whatever he said to Kane, Kane is cool with it. Takes him back. He relays the message back to um, his mom, knowing that. Tyreek is smart. At the end of the day, they want she want Diana to get to know him so she can get more information on him. Tasha is aware, is overhearing this conversation between the CEO and the um the prisoner about this blue blue after pill, and they plan to get her and she don't get what she wants. <laughs> So, you have um, McLean bringing in sex before the judge to have a, a claim about um, prosecutorial misconduct. And it actually goes in his favor because there was some meat on the bone to say that Tasha could be a, a, a queen pin. But... Um, Detective Rodriguez wants to testify in court if this ever goes to trial. She will be testifying. Because Sax is dirty and Tasha is innocent. It's the day of the funeral. Everybody is there. Um, Tasha actually arrives. <sighs> Tariq gives his story about his father and it pleases everybody. Everybody is well pleased. And Tasha asks him to get her a blue morning after pill. So Diana comes to Tyreek's dorm room and he asks her to do her a favor that he has a friend in prison and she wants a blue morning after pill. So then she relays this message to her mom. And Tasha is in jail. She actually gets what she wants and then Kane actually kills Uncle Frank. Tyreek is definitely not like Ghost. Ghost was a gangster. I like, they don't call him Ghost for no reason. They couldn't stick no crime to Ghost. This is how powerful Ghost was. You understand me? When you in a criminality business like this and they can't stick nothing to you? What? What? And I said, Ghost is not dead to me. Um, he will always reign power from his grave. And actually, my two my my favorite characters is actually Cannon, James St. Patrick's, aka Ghost, and Tommy Egan. They will always be. The three original gangsters. Those was my boys. 
And at the end of the day, they did it best. And I like, you could, I don't know. I don't care how you write the script. This could never be power. It's like, I don't know. I, I felt like they written the script backwards. I feel like Power Book 2 should have been first their power. Hey, hey, we don't run, we don't bend, we don't fall. Where my gangsters at? Where my gangsters at? Where my gangsters at? <laughs>